I'm on my way to a store to buy the cheapest tools I can find below $200 to see if I can use them for fine woodworking. So I'm at the store, uh, it's time to go in. I always feel really awkward recording in front of people, but here we go. Can I use the cheapest tools to actually make something nice and useful? $200 seem like an amount everyone should be able to save up over time and I don't think you necessarily need to go all fancy from the start. Maybe you just want to dabble in woodworking every now and then. So I went to a store that is called Biltema in Sweden to see if I could find some really cheap tools. I went around and got what I thought I needed for a specific piece of furniture that I have no idea if I'll be able to build. And to avoid waste, I'll go ahead and give away all the tools to someone who needs them when the project is done. All right, so I'm back in the car. And according to the receipt, I spent uh, 1,945 Swedish crowns, which is $186. So quite a bit below my budget. The project I had imagined was a stool that I've made in the past, but the one I made previously was made using the CNC. So by some that wouldn't even be considered woodworking. I guess the same people don't use a calculator for maths or even an oven for cooking. But this time around I only used the tools I had just purchased. And that would prove quite hard. Let's just say there's a reason they are so cheap. So the project is a stool I've designed in Fusion 360 which is a CAD software and since I had the plans on the computer I could go ahead and print the drawing I had on multiple A4 papers that I just taped together. Then I glued the template on top of a piece of 6mm plywood I had. This would of course be an extra cost, but you could also glue the paper directly on top of your wood. The legs of the stool consist of 4 pieces in total, but 2 pairs of equal legs. So I only needed 2 templates to cut the 4 leg pieces. I'll be using ash that I bought previously really cheap, and that isn't included in the price, but I bought a lot of ash for $100. The wood I'm using for this project is just a small part of it. The wood has been pre-milled because a jointer or a thicknesser wouldn't fit the budget, but you can buy pre-milled wood as well. The first tool I got to use was the jigsaw. This one was $28. It's a 550 watt jigsaw with an RPM of up to 2800. It has a lock button for continuous cutting, a grade scale, it came with three blades, one for wood, one for metal and one for plastic. And inserting the blade was actually very easy on this machine. It doesn't look like much and I have to say it wasn't either. I started by cutting the plywood using the jigsaw and it was quite slow. I figured I would get a lot of tear out around the cut in the plywood using the wooden blade so instead I used the metal blade. I went slow and steady and once it was all cut I could use the next tool to sand any uneven surfaces left by the jigsaw. The sander was also $28, same as the jigsaw. It's a 125 watt sander with triangular shaped papers. It came with a dust collection adapter that I used later on. But sanding outdoors is a good way of escaping the worst of the dust if you don't have a shop vac. Just sending it over to the neighbor. The sander might have been one of the worst tools of the bunch. I sanded some of the rough parts quickly and for that it worked just fine. It would be worse later on when I had to sand the final project. I placed my template on the ash, traced it and then I was back to the jigsaw. I was afraid it might not cut a straight line as that was my main concern with using the jigsaw. But it actually wasn't bad at all, it was just slow. And that might have been due to the blade. Then I could attach my templates to the ash with some double-sided tape. Look at him using a fancy knife as well. Definitely out of budget. Oh, I think most people have a knife, right? Yeah, but maybe not that fancy one. Well, but like I've said, you want it, but you don't need it. But you can use a scissor as well. When my templates were done, I was ready to start using the router. The main tool for this build, I would say and also the most expensive tool I got. It was $60, it's a 1200 watt plunge router. It came with the most common things a router comes with, a variable speed adjustment, a rotating end stop, template guide, circle stop lock to cut round objects, and a parallel stop lock and tension chucks for six and eight millimeters. It even came with extra chucks, so I guess they don't trust the quality of the chucks themselves. 
And here's another thing that wasn't included in the price, router bits. Already blowing the budget of this build. But a router bit isn't really a tool, more of an accessory. But then again, you wouldn't be able to use the router without any bits, so I'm not sure. Let's just say it didn't fit the budget. The bit collection I have is from Bosch and it was 50 bucks. Attaching the bit on this router wasn't easy. The dust collection is kind of in the way and you can of course remove it for easier access, but it is attached with two screws and I didn't feel like removing those just to insert the bit. For copying the template I'm using a flush trim bit. It has a ball bearing that will reference the template and cut the rest of the material. The bit was about 1mm off to be able to cut all the way through, so I had to do two passes. And the router worked kind of good, but it was really hard balancing it. Maybe I should have used the other pieces of wood as a support so that the router wouldn't pivot when I was routing. That balance issue caused some inaccuracies after I was done, but not more than it couldn't be sanded away at a later point. Other than that, it was actually quite good and I managed to cut the leg pieces quite quickly using the router. The next step was to glue the leg pairs together and to do that I wanted to use dowels. It might add some strength to the glue joint but also line the pieces up. And to do that I needed to use the next tool which is this drill and the drill bits I bought. The drill was also $28 and included a battery and a charger. It's a slow charging 12 volt battery that takes between 3 to 5 hours to charge so I really hoped it would last the entire build. But on the upside there are charge light indicators on the battery. And the force of the drill is weak. I taped the drill bit at 2 cm so that I knew I would be able to fit the 4 cm long dowels I bought. I measured where I wanted my dowels to go and drilled the holes with an 8mm bit since the dowels were 8mm. I tried to make sure I was going straight down and not drilling at an angle since that would really screw up the next step. To do that I needed to make some glue blocks since there aren't square corners to use with the clamps I got. So I drew and kind of measured the shape by eye to use the offcuts to create some glue blocks. And then it was back to the jigsaw to cut them out. Cutting these small parts with a jigsaw isn't ideal, but they also didn't need to be perfect, so it worked. I wrapped the blocks in blue tape and I also added blue tape to the legs, and then I super glued the blocks onto the legs to create a place for the clamps to go. So far, everything was working just fine. I went inside to do the glue up, and yeah, the glue wasn't included in the price either, so it was around $10, I suppose. I added glue to the dowels and the edges of the wood and tried clamping it with one of the clamps I bought, but the blue tape wouldn't hold, so I removed the tape and super glued the pieces I'd cut with the jigsaw directly to the legs instead. And then I could clamp them together nicely. Let's add the super glue and tape to the cost as well. I had the legs glue overnight and I started working on the seat. I already had a couple of pieces glued up for the seat, so I guess that's cheating as well. But nonetheless, that's the reality. To cut the round seat, I was going for the router again. This time with another bit and the circle stop block that came with the machine. I measured out the center of the seat and half the total circumference of the seat from the bit to the center point. And then I started cutting lowering the bit ever so slightly with every new lap until I was all the way through. I had the cord hung to the ceiling along with the dust collector hose. So let's add the dust collector to the price as well. A really cheap shop vac would be around $15 more for the cheapest one that they have where I bought the rest of the tools. I had one slip up when cutting the circle where the guide jumped out of the position. It didn't really do any harm other than a small indentation in the seat. Then I sanded for ages with the sander, which was one of the tools I wasn't that impressed with. It felt like nothing was happening when sanding. To attach the legs to the bottom of the seat, I decided to router out a small pocket to give it some extra strength, and not just gluing it together. I traced the legs onto the seat and then routed freehand. And I realized I didn't really see anything, so I had to remove the dust collection guard. 
It looked fairly good and then I added two dowels and I was ready to glue it up. But here's where I lost patience. I couldn't come up with a good way to clamp it whilst also controlling that the legs was level to the top. Look how I cheated. So I broke all the rules and used some bigger clamps. I'm sorry. And since I was already out of budget, I gave it a coat of Rubio Monocoat Intense Black and Charcoal Hard Wax Oil, which I added gold powder into. It gives a subtle glimmer to the finished piece, and I just love how it looks. And to anyone who doesn't enjoy the stain, you can hate me for staining, but as much as you'll try, you'll never hate me more than I hate myself. The ash also had some water stains that I weren't able to sand off, and I know there are ways of getting rid of it, but staining it was a lot easier and I really liked the look. As soon as I knew I was done using the tools, I posted a question on Facebook Marketplace asking if anyone wanted the tools for free. And it wasn't a hard sell. I immediately had someone come over to pick them up and he seemed pleased with them. And I have to say, I'm quite pleased and to be honest, proud because I only started woodworking three years ago and now I know how to do this piece from the drawing board to a finished piece. Also using the cheapest tools I could find. So I guess the big question is should you buy the cheapest tools you can find? Yes and no. I mean if you don't know that this is something you'll be doing for a long time going forward there's really no need to spend tons of money. And we've all done it, I suppose. We buy what we can afford at the moment to be able to get started, and then we get better tools when we can afford it and know that we want it. With that said, do some research according to your budget and what you think you'll be using it for. These tools, they do work, but I wouldn't recommend them for fine woodworking. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.